we found the property and fell in love and we were really excited just by that opportunity. No real estate experience. What we really love about Ito and Izu, easy to get to, easy to access, and there's definitely something for everybody. We were discovering that there are some really beautiful buildings and structures out there, especially in Japan. What's going on Akia Hunters? Welcome back to my channel. I have a very exciting episode, a special episode for you today because I got to interview someone that's doing something really cool. She is the co-owner of this place called The Layer and it's the top rated Airbnb in Japan. Her name is Hilary Hewins and she's originally from California. She's lived in many different cities and ended up in Tokyo and she's been living in Japan for the past seven years. So she purchased an Akia in Ito, Shizuoka Prefecture and converted into a beautiful guest house. And she did that during the pandemic. And now it's a thriving short-term stay. So many people from all over the world love to visit there. And it's really beautiful. And I'm going to share the pictures of the place during the interview. So in this interview, we talked about how she found the deal, purchased it, renovated it. She's operating it basically from the beginning to an end. It's a must watch. Before we dive into the interview, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss the future episodes. It really helps the channel grow and I would really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, you can download my free guide, how to buy an Akia in Japan as a foreigner. You can hit the link below and download it for free. Now, enjoy my conversation with Hillary. Well, Hillary, thanks for having me today. Of course, you're very welcome. I mean, so excited to have this conversation with you. Thanks, me too. Yeah, yeah. so you're the owner of one of the, the best Airbnbs in Japan by Condé Nast. They published it a couple months ago and your property is listed as the leading uh, Airbnb in Japan. That's super cool. Thanks. Congrats. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was a really, really nice compliment. Right. And um, yeah, my business partner and I were just happy to see it. We work really hard to try and keep our guests happy. So we were just really pleased. Yeah, pleased to, to see the recognition and uh, be featured by such a great publication. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually worked for Condé Nast for a few months. Oh, no way. Yeah. Huh, do um, what? Um, I was an intern at Golf Digest uh -huh. Yeah, many, many years ago, my college days. So yeah, Condé Nast, I went to the headquarters in New York, in mm. New York City. Um, I've been there too. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I've been wanting to stay at your place too, but it's just fully booked. Um, you know, <laughs> everyone wants to stay there. It's, it looks beautiful, you know, the pictures and all that stuff. And I'm, yeah, I have so many questions yeah. about your Thank property you. and... And I, you know, you, you briefly said uh, right before you started filming, but you have more more than this property in Japan, so. Yes, yeah. working on a, a few more projects. Yeah. A couple things in the works, but right now the, the house in Ito is the, the one that's open. Mm -hmm. But we hope that 2024 and beyond will, will provide more opportunities as well. That's awesome. Yeah. So my audience is mainly from outside of Japan or you know, people that are not originally from Japan, but live in Japan, and they're really interested in real estate investing, long term, short term. And you came from the US. Um, actually, I'm going to ask you to, you know, share your story. But where are you from? And how did you come to Japan? And tell us your story up yeah. to this point. Okay, so I'm from California, uh, went to school there, I moved to New York to go to grad school, lived in New York and worked actually in, in counseling for about 10 years. And then my husband and I decided we wanted to see more of the world, started to consider where we would want to go, and we ended up moving to Shanghai through my job, still working in counseling, and then that brought us to Japan about six years ago. And we, we loved living in Shanghai, but when we got to Japan, we felt really at home here and see a lot of opportunity here as well. And so, yeah, so it's been about six years. And just kind of getting into the hospitality element and, and home renovation, that piece, about three years ago. And how did that come about? So you were working full time, right, mm -hmm. as a counselor. And did you have any uh, real estate experience before that or how, yeah? <laughs> yeah, no, no real estate experience whatsoever besides being like an aggressive hunter of really great apartment deals in New York City and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Shanghai and then in Tokyo, like uh -huh. looking at a lot of places before we settled because we care a lot about design and our space, but no actual, no real estate experience. But it came about actually right around the beginning of COVID, a friend, I had sort of mutual friends introduced me to someone who became my very close friend and business partner. And we had similar ideas about 
wanting to start a hospitality business in Japan. And it took a little while to figure out sort of what our first project would be, but then we ended up finding this house in Ito and falling in love and spending a long time uh, just getting to know the house and getting to know the area and then working on the process of renovating it and mm. opening it up for people to stay in. That's awesome. So for those who don't know where Ito is mm. and what it's known for, can you explain a little bit about that town? Sure. Yeah. Um, so Ito is in the, the Izu Peninsula, yeah. so just about two hours south of Tokyo. Famous for onsen, famous for, for hospitality. Actually, the entire Izu Peninsula and entire Shizuoka region, I think, are really popular with visitors. A few other towns around there are quite popular. Izu Peninsula is famous for having the most beautiful beaches in that are accessible to, to Tokyo. Yeah. And Ito is sort of right at the, the top of the peninsula, so quite easy to get to from the city. Like, you can get there for or even just a weekend. But then you have access to the, the rest of the peninsula, and there's hiking and waterfalls and onsen and delicious seafood and it's kind of famous as a yeah as a, a getaway from the city mm -hmm. so quite a lot for visitors to, to do. Would you compare that as like a New York City's like Hamptons or something? Like, no, I just thought about it. <laughs> yeah. I never thought about it before. Yes. Like, um, it's, like you no, that's, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not the Hamptons. Uh, I'm trying to think about what a good analogy would be. So it's because it's, it's a little bit casual and actually that's what we like about yeah. it. So I think that like when I think of the Hamptons, I think that it's um, maybe difficult for a lot of people to yeah, access because true. of cost but I think what we really love about Ito and Izu is actually that it's quite easy to get to easy to access and you know there's definitely something for for everybody so it's like very friendly very warm place and I think Ito as a town it's a, got this kind of retro faded charm to it very lots of like Showa era architecture and we think that it's just really really charming so yeah i'm trying to think I'll, if i think of a good analogy to new york mm -hmm. I'll, I'll mention it but i think it's just a very really accessible place a very friendly place and then your your place is called the layer mm. and i saw the website it's beautiful <laughs> by the way it's such a cool website <laughs> um tell, tell me the 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 story behind the name and uh, mm. what do you hope to provide mm. uh, what kind of experience do you hope to provide for the guests so we came up with this idea originally for the the name kind of playing with so my business partner is also from the west coast he's from oregon and talking about just kind of these coastal things and we both grew up right on the coast, um, different parts, parts of the West Coast, but there's something called the marine layer, which is this fog that's there in the morning and then it kind of burns off throughout the day and it kind of changes throughout the day. But when we started to think about uh, the houses and other things that we've looked at, other properties that, that we have and things that we're kind of interested in, what it really came down to and, and the reason why we connected with that name is that we were discovering that there are some really beautiful buildings and structures out there, especially in Japan, that you know have had sort of layers added onto them over time. And what we wanted to do is sort of look at these places and think about what the, the core mm -hmm. of it is. Like what are the essential layers that really represent the character of the buildings and keep elements of the era in which they were created. So kind of thinking about this concept of removing layers and things that have been added on over time mm -hmm to get to the core element of what the building is and you know sort of the beauty within within these buildings and then sort of so remove some layers but then we also want to add on layers of modernity and comfort and a little bit of fun a little bit of luxury as well but still sort of honoring you know the intentions with which they were created and the eras with in which they were created oh i love that that's yes. so cool yeah <laughs> a bit of meaning actually yeah. to it yeah, yeah. But it I, is something that we thought about very intentionally. I, I love the catchy name, and now that I know the meaning of it, yeah, it's I, I love that even more. So a lot of my audience, so I've spoken to quite a few of them, and many of them would love to do what you did. So mm. they're interested in purchasing something, you know, a little bit outside of Tokyo or a big city as a vacation home, mm. and they would want to spend, you know, several weeks to three months, maybe six months tops out of the year. But when they're not using it, you know, they want to rent it out or, mm -hmm. you know, have someone use it. And you achieved just that. So could you walk me through <laughs> like what the process was like? You know, how did you get it, you know, purchase it, uh, your renovation process, mm. some things that 
people might not know about when it comes to purchasing real estate in Japan? I mean, the first thing is that, you know, I'm so fortunate to have started a business with a friend、mm -hmm. and kind of have someone really fun to work on a project with. Yeah. And also, fortunately, he is fluent in Japanese.、Mm -hmm. And so there's, a, there's quite a lot of this process that required, of course, a lot of Japanese language. And even though I'm studying, I'm still a ways away from being able to, you know, manage a real estate transaction in Japanese. So that's, that's definitely part of it, was, was having that support and having that partnership. And just, you know, again, just having someone really fun to, to kind of move through the process of starting a business with. So we found the property and fell in love. We had heard from the, the owner, who was a woman living in, in Tokyo. She was using it as a, as a weekend house, as a vacation house. But it was, you know, 1960s, like really well preserved Japanese style building. And And、she had said that a lot of people who were coming through to look at it were interested in tearing it down and rebuilding because it does have a small view of the ocean. But that when she saw us come through and heard that we did not want to tear it down, she actually was really excited by that and、um, gave us a bit of a discount and incentivized us to,、mm -hmm. to move through the process and, and make the purchase. And we were really excited just by that opportunity. And yeah, so you, you know, with these older buildings, you, you pay cash、mm -hmm. <laughs> because banks won't finance them for a number of reasons.、Mm -hmm. So that was something that we had to figure out. But we decided since we were starting a business that we wanted to invest a little bit of our own money in this first project and、mm -hmm. then see kind of where it went. So we went through the purchase process, which was exciting, and then started the renovation process. We're lucky to find an amazing contractor who just works with so many skilled artists. So, there are so many elements of the building that, you know, I think when it was built, it was built in quite a nice way with a lot of、like、wood detail and jointery and just things we wanted to make sure to, to keep in really amazing shape. And so, found someone who could bring in some of those skilled artisans to, to do a bit of, I mean, it's definitely renovation work, but a bit of restoration work as well. But really, just focusing on, you know, Keeping the best elements of, of the house and upgrading things like the kitchen and the bathroom and making those really, really nice. But definitely, yeah, we worked with a contractor to get that done, and we worked actually with an architect to do earthquake retrofitting. Oh, which,、wow. yeah, which is, is something that we felt was really important to do, which I don't know if a lot of people do it, but、yeah. for us, we really wanted to. To do that because of just the way that those houses are.、Mm -hmm. We just wanted that peace of mind.、Yeah. And so we were able to, to do that without actually damaging or changing any of the internal、wow. structures. So、okay. that, was, that was something a little bit extra that,、yeah. that we did. So you said, the, the, one of my next question was,、mm. how did you finance it? But you, that was a cash purchase.、Awesome. It was. Yeah. yeah. And then、um, how long did the, the whole process take from starting to you know, look for properties?、Mm -hmm. um, you know, Actually, making an offer, closing, and then the whole renovation process. So, from seeing the property to closing was under a month. And、oh, wow. Really、Quick. fast. Yeah. yeah. We set aside a weekend to go look at houses. We saw, I think, three or four houses, maybe five. And this was the last one we saw, but it was almost like saving the best for last、mm -hmm. because as soon as like, we kind of knew, it was the one that caught our eye originally in Ito. I had had some experience going down to Atami and other parts of Izu, but not much in, in Ito. But Blake had had some experience visiting Ito. And so we actually were looking in that area because we knew the town was really cute. So, we saw a few different houses down there, but as soon as we walked into this one, it was like all the rest just went out the window because this one was amazing. So, under a month to, to close on it. And then we took our time through the design and renovation process because it was end of 2020, I think, 2021. Right around there, and we had it was a very quiet time. <laughs> we had extra time, and so what that enabled us to do, which is something that I think is still paying benefits right now, was do a lot of research into materials and how to source things and just understanding the different elements of Japanese design and architecture and sort of why things are the way they are. And luckily, we had the time to do that, so we would go and visit. 
you know, the, the shop that, you know, for the, the paper for the Fusuma, they still are using the same wood blocks, you know, that they've used for hundreds of years, or they've replicated wood blocks, you know, that, that they've had for 400 years, actually. Some of the, the paper that we use for the house is from a shop that has been around for over 400 years. So we had time to learn little things like that, and that was really, really fun. But then once we actually started with the, the contractor, it was like maybe three or four months from start oh, to finish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the lead up part to that, we yeah. kind of on purpose extended it because we <laughs> we had the time to, to do so. So it did actually take more than a year. Okay. From the from, close right. to the completion. Yeah. But a lot of that was because Researching. of... Researching. Right. Exactly. Wow. Awesome. Time we wanted to spend. Yeah. To create something really special. So it took about a little over a year from closing to completion of renovation. Mm. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then did you open up for, so now it's an Airbnb and now did you operate as an Airbnb right away um, after the renovation was done? So then there was the next step of right. getting the hotel license, right. <laughs> which okay. is really complicated as yeah. I think you've probably, you probably know for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are several types of licenses that you can get in Japan. We have one that is a full full hotel license, so we yeah. can operate year round. And you know, there are some that it only allow you to operate about half of the year. Minpaku. Minpaku license, license yeah. exactly. And it was we were able to get the the full license, mm -hmm. and we actually we worked with an agency to help us manage that. There's just a lot of paperwork, and it involves like the fire department and lots of you know lots of public officials, and so mm -hmm. we. And they're we, English speaking. Or they are not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so your business yeah. partner so, kind of handle that yes, portion. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yes, very thankfully. So moving through that process, I think you do need someone who speaks Japanese to, you know, even if you find the, the agency that can, can help you get the license. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's, it's rather complicated. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but so we were able to do that, but that, that took a little while, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to remember the exact timeline, but... It definitely was, you know, more than a, a year and a half after we, we bought the, the house that then we had our first guests. Mm -hmm. Although, like I said, a lot of that was just us kind of taking our time through, mm -hmm. through the process. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of towns are interested in visitors. And I think, you know, in Izu, you know, whether it's Ito or any of the other towns, it's a big part of, you know, what the, of the local economy. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we also are really happy to, you know, do our best to, to bring people to places that perhaps they might not have otherwise discovered as well. And that's actually, you know, that is that is a part of what we're we're hoping to do. We you know we have a lot of domestic domestic visitors um, okay. that stay at our place as well, yeah. which is is great. I mean, we want everybody to to stay there. I, probably like if you're on social media, you see lots and lots of Japan content mm -hmm. that's about a lot of the same places over and over again. And then I, th I think there are also people who are saying you know this is a, a huge country with so much to offer. And you know there are these little towns that are kind of maybe, maybe it's on the way somewhere, but take a step off of the the well-trodden path for a moment and get a little bit outside, of you know sort of you know the the famous places that everyone likes to visit and hopefully find some really wonderful rewards in those experiences as well. So you know so that's that's something that we're we're super interested in and especially just Izu overall has so much to offer. Since you mentioned about different types of licensing, so hotel license and Minpaku, what are some of the main differences besides year-round versus 180 days? I think some of it might be prefecture by prefecture mm -hmm. rules. The, the main one is the, the number of days. Yeah. But it's also, you know, not every location in Japan allows for both. Right. So it depends on where in the town okay. something might be yeah. or if it's in a certain type of um, housing development, like how it, even if it was developed a long time ago, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, it's only zoned for you know a certain type of license so mm -hmm. so that's i think if people are looking to to buy property here we've found some really adorable houses and they're zoned for for minpaku for mm -hmm. half time 
And that, that can definitely still work, but it's just something to, to be aware of. And, you know, when we're talking about the, the design, I、mm-hmm. definitely wanted to ask you about the, the vision for, for the layer because it's got a karaoke, karaoke <laughs> room, right? Yes.、Um, and I thought that was so cool. And t- tell me more about how that came about and how did you get, get that to actually、yeah. um, yes. live in that property? Okay, so that house in particular had three tatami rooms and three wash- washitsu, and it had one room that was called like a Western style room,、mm-hmm. and it had hardwood floors and none of the kind of other Japanese features. It had some really beautiful woodworking on the ceiling, but it wasn't built as you know, a Japanese style room. And we were kind of looking at it and trying to think you know, what would be a really what would be a fun way to use that space. And at first, we were envisioning something. You know, a little bit contemporary, but then we, I mean, we just, you know, we love karaoke and we had seen a house that, like, while we were down there visiting the first time, a house that had this, like, little basement room. And I made a joke, like, oh, if, you know, if we got this house, this could be the, the karaoke basement room. But then when we saw this house, eventually we kind of came to the, the idea that actually this house does have a karaoke room in it.、Mm-hmm. And Ito in particular is famous for a certain type of karaoke experience called a karaoke snack. Okay, wait, so、mm. that was built, built in already? The、uh, room was the there. Room. Yeah, the room was there. The room there. was there. Okay, yeah. And it was, it had hardwood floors. Like it was built,、yeah. it was different than the rest of the room. So we wanted to do something different with、yeah. it. But the idea of, you know, having a karaoke room <laughs> at home、yeah. sounded fun. Yes,、yeah, so、we just decided, you know, could we put this together and, and what would that look like? What would it, what would it feel like? And、um, we collect vinyl, and as you can probably see,、um, <laughs> you know, so the idea of decorating it with music and records and, you know, Being able to spend some time sourcing you know, sort of old Japanese records sounded really fun. So we decided that would be the best, best use for the room. And bought heavy curtains to soundproof it a little bit from the neighbors, but it's, you know, <laughs> can't really hear the karaoke if you're, you're outside. So、mm-hmm. it works out. So guests can come in and sing to their heart's content. You mentioned about wanting to do you know, hospitality work in、mm-hmm. Japan. Did you have any、uh, hospitality experience before you know, being a、uh, Being a host of Airbnb? When I was younger, and especially you know, in high school and through college, definitely had a lot of jobs in hospitality, food and beverage,、mm-hmm. um, things like that. Actually, a long time ago in New York, we did rent out our apartment in the olden days of、yeah. Airbnb, back when it was not quite what it is now. You know, in Japan, especially, you have to have the license to,、mm-hmm. to be on an Airbnb platform. They, there's no way around it.、Mm-hmm. But in the olden days, yeah, we had you know, rented our, house, our apartment, our, our Brooklyn apartment out. On Airbnb, so I had that experience. And then, aside from that, I mean, it, it might, you know, it's a bit of a, a stretch, but actually, it's not a stretch. So, you know, my background is in counseling and well being. And a lot of the skills that, you know, just being attuned to people's interests, being attuned to, you know,、uh, people's needs and wanting people to, you know, to. To be happy and have a nice time. There is actually quite a bit of overlap、mm-hmm. between the skills that I, I use just you know, working in, in well being and the skills that I use you know, talking to guests and,、mm-hmm. and hoping to create a nice experience for them. But aside from that, no. But I do, I've always really loved traveling and paying really close attention to the experience that I have when I'm traveling and noticing you know, sort of what are the, the touch points, what are the friction points. What are the things that you know, really create a nice experience for people? And so, you know, just being interested in that, I think, helps.、Mm-hmm. So, that's, I guess that's sort of how I came to it. And how did that experience help you become, I think, you're one of the best hosts, right? <laughs> in Japan. <I've, laughs> I mean, that's a, it's a nice, a nice compliment. You know, creating a nice space that、yeah. people feel comfortable in and excited about being in, I think that that's a big part of it.、Mm-hmm. I also just try and be available for people. So, you、yeah. handle all the bookings, like requests and all that stuff yourself? Exactly. Got it.、Okay. Yeah. All the bookings, all、mm-hmm. the communication. Guests, you know, of course, they have the place to themselves while they're there, but we always try and just ask them if they, you know, if they are trying to plan something or if they want any recommendations. We give a lot of recommendations、mm-hmm. to guests about sort of what to do in and around the area. I think, you know, creating guides that help people to explore and,、mm-hmm. and get out and see what there is to, to offer. 
But I think, so it's a couple things, like trying to understand sort of what's the level of interaction that the guest wants. Mm. And then also hopefully trying to set expectations. You know, it's an older house in the countryside. It is not without flaws, even though we worked really hard to create a nice experience. I think letting people know that, you know, it's, it's an old house in the countryside and, you know, occasionally like, if there's a big storm, you know, it will feel, you'll feel the weather. I mean, we did a lot of work to, we actually added a lot of insulation and, and things like that, but you know, it's an old house in the countryside. Sometimes it takes a moment for the hot water to heat up, for example. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everything, you know, if a guest has needs, we always just do our best to, to respond. So I would say, yeah, I would say that those are the kind of the key things, like understanding the needs of the, the guests and what they're hoping for in terms of interaction. And then, um, yeah, just setting expectations about what the house is and isn't because yeah. it's it's not a brand new building, you right. know, with that that same level of experience. But I think that's what people like about it. Mm. Um, it's a, it's some it's a bit of an a usual, unusual stay. How are you? How do you see your business growing, and how do you see yourself like setting up a system to keep up with that growth? So definitely spending more time in Atami. That will mm. be the location of our, our next project or yeah. one of our next projects. And eventually we would love to hire a staff mm. and actually build out. The next project hopefully will be a little bit bigger. We have a, a small building that we are hoping to, to renovate in Atami. Yeah. And that will like be... Like a whole building. It's a very small building, <laughs> a very small building um, with hopefully a, a few hotel rooms and um, yeah. and a small bar slash cafe. Still kind of working on exactly what that's going to, to look like, but that would of course involve staff and yeah. involve us being there, you know, mostly full time. I think that's generally what it looks like is, you know, is we would love to have a few more houses mm -hmm. and create more experiences like the Ito house, like the Lair Ito for for people kind of we're yeah, looking at another house down in Izu not sure what will happen but you know we, we also want to fall in love with the, the properties that we yeah. that we buy so it's not just any house mm -hmm. that, that we're looking for so we're looking for something that we can either you know is sort of a an undiscovered or, or sort of maybe passed over gem that we can breathe some life back into. And also, you know, with with the Ito house, even though it is a short term rental, a lot of people do like to stay there for quite a long time. Mm. So we have had guests, you know, who stay for a week, even a month. And, you know, because they want this experience of, of living in that style of a, mm -hmm. of a house for more than just a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So that has kept just kept the management of it pretty manageable yeah I guess yeah, yeah. and we have we've, ha we've been also lucky to have return visitors as well nice yeah huh. so that's something actually we're really proud of that people like it enough to come back mm -hmm. there are so many places to visit in Japan and so many beautiful places to stay we feel really honored that people have have chosen to to return to to our, our place so you mentioned about um, the, the building in Atami mm -hmm. and possibly purchasing more properties down in Izu what other projects are you working on in Japan Yes, so we have the the building in Atami, and that I would say is the the next big project. We did we did renovate a small apartment, as I mentioned, for us to stay in in Atami. Mm -hmm. We have one more apartment in Atami that we're hoping to to renovate. Not exactly sure of the timeline of that one, but it was near the apartment that we already renovated so and it's it's beautiful we hope to figure out sort of how to bring that one to life someday but not exactly sure what that one's going to look like we have a, a project that is hopefully coming together in Nagano actually mm -hmm. and that is outside of the area that we were originally looking yeah. but we also love spending a lot of time in Nagano in the winter because mm -hmm. we love to go up and enjoy the mountains and ski and snowboard and so we found a place that we're really happy with and hopefully that will come together in time for next ski season. Wow, yeah. that's so, so exciting. A bit outside of sort of, you know, our core of what we're envisioning, which is, you know, as mentioned, all around Izu. But we did find something that we think makes sense for us. So hopefully we can bring something to life in that part of Japan as well. I mean, we're focused on one area, but 
there are so many other areas that are worth exploring and especially like getting you know out of the city a few hours away from the big cities you can find some really just beautiful gems so mm. we'll see hopefully that one will come together by the end of next ski season oh, yeah so exciting but it would be another private rental similar to the Ito house yeah. so you know a full group can rent it for hopefully a little bit longer than a few days because of the way ski season works, but kind of like a weekly rental throughout ski season. Nice. And actually in the summer as well. So yeah, a lot of people focus on that region for skiing. Yeah, uh, but the summers are, yeah, Summers beautiful. are super beautiful yeah. and it's not as hot as other parts of yeah. Japan, so. Great golf courses. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So hopefully, you know, that will, actually we'd love, we'll see how fast we can, we can move this project along, but the aim is, next ski season or maybe a little bit of green season as well like you said for for those nice golf courses up there yeah yeah and lakes and all kinds of fun stuff awesome actually talking mm. to you makes me want to do short-term rentals because <laughs> <laughs> i specialize in long term at this moment mm. and i briefly mentioned to you earlier but I eventually want to get into short-term rentals. Mm. My parents do Airbnb. I've stayed, stayed there. Stayed there. I <laughs> know. I've stayed there. So lovely. Yeah. And then yeah. they, uh, they, they were loving it. Yeah. You know, they do, uh, they're so pr um, proud of uh, yeah. the, the experience that they provide. And now it's hard to go back to their place. You know, I have to ask them like in advance, like, hey, can I stay like this weekend? And like, oh, just let me check. Like, uh, no, sorry, it's booked. And then when done well, obviously mm. you're taking more risks with more capital involved. Mm. But if you if you do the way you did it, like done well, I think, you know, it's, it's going to bring not just the financial returns, but I feel like it's more fulfilling, right? Like I come from a hospitality background mm. as well. And uh, I, I love kind of interacting with guests and customers in a way that they want to be treated. So yeah, that's something that I'm very attracted to. I'm not saying long term you can't do that. You, you can still do it, but it's a lot more hands off. And, you know, there are different ways that you can still provide great service. But yeah, it makes me want to kind of work on that new you know new project eventually yeah. Yeah. I mean I, yeah I know a little bit about your background yeah. I mean we've known each other <laughs> for a while yeah you should definitely do it yeah. it is it is a lot it is a lot of work yeah. it is really hands-on but I think you know for my personality and the way that I like to interact mm. with people you know and just create these positive experiences I find it really rewarding so when I say work you know it's also it, it doesn't feel like work. It, it feels actually, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. It feels, you know, like I get to be a part of people's lives for just a short amount of time and, and usually interacting with them when they're doing something that's really special, like being on vacation with friends and family mm -hmm. and exploring a new place. And I think there's a lot of reward in that. And that's, I mean, that's just what I love about it mm -hmm. is, you know, if I can help to create any sort of you know special experience or help people just have a little bit of a different perspective or discuss you know discover something new or gain that feeling of discovery on their their trip um, whether they're coming from within Japan or outside of Japan I mean to me it's a really special experience really rewarding mm -hmm. and you know when I yeah so when I was saying I wanted to do something in hospitality yeah. that's the piece of it that I really love yeah yeah I also really love the design piece. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's connecting with people yeah. so that's why you know the private houses are really nice but I would love absolutely love you know having a small hotel maybe something bigger in the future but you know just being able to interact with people as they're exploring someplace new yeah or someplace they've been to before but maybe seeing something new that time so you've lived in some of the most expensive cities in the world New York places in California you're from California mm -hmm. uh, before Japan you were in Shanghai what makes you want to stay in Japan after all these years and, you know, experiencing different parts of the world? So when we left New York, I did think that we would keep going, you know, Shanghai, somewhere else, another, maybe another region of the world. But we got to Japan and there's a lot about life here that is, I think, it's like the flow of the seasons and something new in every season. And there's just so much that I get excited about for every season and so much to explore mm -hmm. like just you know it's a huge country with just a lot of diversity within the cultures throughout and sort of the regions throughout Japan like you go somewhere and you experience something really different from you know the north of Japan to the south so I feel like there's still so much here that I want to explore 
and you know like thinking about cost definitely coming from New York <laughs> and thinking about the cost of living and sort of the quality of my experience in day-to-day -day life in New York I loved living there it's really expensive mm -hmm. and it's a lot more expensive now than when I left especially uh, for the past two years right when, when the yen just <laughs> plummeted yes <laughs> that's definitely not helping is the yeah is the, the yeah the value of the yen but even even with that, yeah. um, you know, there's there's just a lot about life in Japan that is feels like I can access a lot. Whether I mean, it's just naturally very very beautiful, like beaches, mountains. You know, it's got everything. But yeah, just kind of getting into the the flow of the seasons and everything there is to enjoy. Different food, different festivals, different outdoor activities definitely keeps us connected here. But then also, you know, getting a bit outside of Tokyo, I think then you can find a lot of value in yeah, and just cost of, of housing as well. So that's, yeah. I mean, honestly, when I think about it sometimes, like I'm really, really grateful to be here and I feel really fortunate to, to be in a place where I can, you know, keep a little bit of a life in the city and also spend time in much quieter places. So I feel, yeah, I feel really grateful for Japan. Well, thank you so much for your time <laughs> uh, for this interview. Really enjoyed it. And I learned a lot from your experience. Oh, thanks so much. It was fun. Yeah. yeah, super fun. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. And if people wanted to want to, you know, reach out to you, contact you, is there a way to contact you or yes. the layer? Yeah, what's the best way? Yes, definitely. I mean, probably right now. Our website is is easy. It's thelayer.jp. And then also our Instagrams are great ways to get in touch with me. So um, I'm sure you'll link to them. But yeah, yeah the thelayer.hotels and then thelayer.ito on Instagram. Those are probably the, the best ways. Awesome. Moment. Yeah. I'll put the links below, so make sure to check out her place, The Layer. Yeah. yeah. Well, All thank right. you, Hillary. Thank you. There you have it. If you enjoyed my conversation with Hillary and want to know more about her and her Airbnb, you can go to the links below in the description. Finally, I have an exciting announcement. So I'm partnering with Michael from Cheap Houses Japan and promoting his newsletter. So if you sign up for his newsletter, Cheap Houses Japan, through my link, you'll get 20% off of the subscription subscription and you won't get that if you go directly through him so yeah that's how generous he is so make sure you click my link through and you can get your discount and hopefully you can find your dream house in Japan and if you need help purchasing it we have a service just for that and I put all those links below in the description so make sure to check them out thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did I'm sure you're gonna like this one also so make sure to watch this next and I will see you in the next one